All right, remember how I gave you these summations, the summation of one, summation of k, summation of k squared, and I talked about the fact that it could be used um, when we're doing these Riemann sums as a way of finding this equation that we can use for any number of subdivisions. And, and I basically said to you, hey, you know, you're going to have to trust me. I showed you that they worked, but I basically said you're going to have to trust me that, this is, that these are true. I'm going to show you one technique today on how to find one of these summations. And really, it's just something in addition to what we're already learning with Riemann sums. Um, it doesn't really have much to do in terms of Riemann sums, like doing another Riemann sum or something, but it is some involved algebra. For those of you that love algebra, you're going to really love this. So kind of remember these key equations. We're going to use them for a second. Also, just as a little side note, um, in number 30 in your homework assignment that you should have done for before this video here, um, we did a question like this, where it said the summation is k goes from 1 to 5 of k plus 1 cubed minus k cubed. Now, for many of you, you probably just plugged in 1 and did the whole thing. You know, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 8 minus 1, 7, done, wrote down 7. But if I showed it to you in a more lengthy way, I suppose, you're going to see something that's kind of neat. So plug in 1, you'd get 1 plus 1, as I said, was 2 cubed, minus, now we're going to put 1 cubed, right? Plus, so that's the first term. Then the next one will be by plugging in 2. So it's 2 plus 1, which is 3 cubed, minus 2 cubed. And that would be the second term. Then we would do the third one, which would be 3 plus 1, or 4 cubed, minus 3 cubed. And then we do the fourth term, which would be 5 cubed, minus 4 cubed. Let's see if I can squeeze this in here. It'd be 6 cubed minus 5 cubed as our last term. Now, obviously, many of you probably, when you did this question, just like I said, just you know, had 7 for the first one, and then you had uh, 27 minus 8, so you had 19, and then you, had, you, know, you kept doing those individual numbers. But what is a much nicer way of looking at it, if you see this, we have 2 cubed, and we have a minus 2 cubed. They would cancel each other out. Oh, I have a 3 cubed and a minus 3 cubed. Those would cancel out. What else? 4 cubed, minus 4 cubed. 5 cubed, minus 5 cubed. So what it basically all amounts to is 6 cubed minus 1 cubed. Is there something to coming from right here to here without having to do that? So that if I had to do the summation as k went from 1 to 50, I wouldn't actually have to do, you know, all of those parentheses things. But I could actually come up with the answer of what this would be right out of the gate. Is there something that we can see? Well, think about that. This was a 5, but we have a 6 here. So how could I write that if this is 50? 51 cubed. All right, and what about this? This said 1, and this says 1. There, that's something to that. Let's see if that would work universally. I just want to see how this actually works out. All right, so let's look at this. Basically what we're saying then is that if I have k plus one cubed, that I can take n and just add one to it and that would equal n plus one cubed minus one cubed. That's what we just said. Interesting. Well, let's multiply this out. That would mean that n plus one cubed, if I multiply that out, you know, n plus 1 times n plus 1 times n plus 1. And I'm going to save us some time, and I'm just going to do this for us. Would be n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1, which would be your binomial theorem, right? We could do it that way. Minus 1 cubed. And I get that. So this would equal n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n. The ones would cancel out. Are you everybody okay with that? All right. Here on the left... If I was to multiply this stuff out, I would have instead, watch this, this would be again k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 minus k cubed. Okay, so let's think about what happens here. Your k cubes are going to delete here, right? Still moving on here. So just watch this. This is really unique. I got 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 on the left. I've got n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I, I want us to, we're going to use this, all right, to find the summation of k squared. And you might think, but we know what the summation of k squared is, Mrs. Nez. We know it's the one half, or, sorry, 
it's the one third n cubed plus one half n squared plus one second. We know that. Well, I'm just going to show you that I can find it because this is really unique here, what we've got going on. So I'm going to just keep this 3k squared over here on this side. All right. I want you to understand that I've got the summation of 3k or rather 3 summation k and I've got the summation of 1 on this left hand side. I'm going to the right hand side it's still the same, okay? So if I could separate those, just, that's, that's all right. I won't take the time. All right, so let's just keep working through this. Again, I'm going to pretend I don't know, all right? And so what is the summation of k? The summation of k was 1 half n squared plus 1 half n, and this was just n. So that would be 3 halves n squared plus 3 halves n plus n. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to put those two together and say, hey, that's 5 n over 2n. Is everybody okay? So that would give me 3n squared over 2 plus 3, oh, sorry, 5n over 2. Remember, on the right-hand side, we have n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n. All right. Now what we're going to do, whoops, I need to put an equal sign here. Now what we're going to do, we have that summation of 3k squared still left here. We're going to leave that guy, like I said, we're going to leave him off to the side. We're, going to, we're basically going to solve for that. So all of this stuff here, I'm going to subtract 3n squared over 2 and subtract 5n over 2 from this side. So I would have summation of 3k squared equals n cubed, nothing subtracting from that. This is 6 over 2, right? And we're, so we have 3 over 2 n squared plus, again, we'd have 6 over 2 minus 5, so that'd be 1 half n. You're like, okay, what do we got here? Now, this 3 that's in, in here, I'm going to divide by that 3, and I would get the summation of k squared would be left here, because k goes from 1 to n, and it's, I just didn't carry it down through the whole thing. Divide this by 3, I'd get 1 third n cubed. Divide this one by 3s, the 3s would actually divide out, give me 1 half n squared, and then I'd have 1 sixth n, which was the equation that I've given you all along. Again, this is just a method that we can use. So let me help you out. In your homework, you are going to now find the summation of k cubed. Now, the summation of k cubed isn't something that you know, and so we're going to have to use the stuff that we already have in our arsenal. Those, those three equations that I gave you some time ago um, to do. So just to get you started, what does this look like? This looks like you're going to multiply this stuff out. So multiply those out. All right? And so just to help you out, um, binomial theorem, if you remember, you'd have the 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, which means to you, and I know it's been a while, but that means you have 1 k to the fourth, you have 4 k cubed, you have 6 k squared, you have 4 k plus 1 minus k to the fourth. That's the left-hand side right there. On the right-hand side, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to multiply this n out. I'll start you out again on this one. So it'll be n to the fourth plus 4n cubed plus 6n squared plus 4n plus 1. Oh, but there's that minus 1 that's left here. So that's the left side. That's the right side. Now, just to direct you verbally what's going to happen here, um, you're going to combine things that are alike. You're going to move everything over here except for, well, the k to the fourths are going to cancel, right? You're going to move everything over here, and I somehow included this in the bracket, but you're going to move everything except this guy. He's going to stay on the left-hand side, move everything to the right, and you're going to solve for k cubed. Remember that this summation sign does go to everybody, so we're going to replace it with those equations that you see there on the right-hand side of your screen. And that's how we're going to solve for the summation of k cubed. That's as part of your homework, and I'd like you to do that and work on that, obviously, as part of your homework tonight. So, good luck.